watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. Good evening and welcome to the Southern Nevada News Network. I'm Maria Centers. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm David Preston. The U.S. government issued foreign cyber attack warnings on American water and sewage infrastructures. Samantha Roberts now brings us the story. On Wednesday, March 20th, the U.S. government issued a warning to state governors that foreign hackers are carrying out cyber attacks against water and sewage systems throughout the country. National Security Advisor Jack Sullivan and Environment Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan warned that disabling cyber attacks are striking wastewater systems throughout the United States. According to the letter that was released, they believe the cyber attacks are coming from Iran and China. Sullivan and Regan's cited a recent case in which hackers accused of acting in concert with Iran's Revolutionary Guards had disabled a controller at a water facility in Pennsylvania. They also called out a Chinese hacking group dubbed Volt Typhoon, which they said had compromised information technology of multiple critical infrastructure systems, including drinking water in the United States and its territories. These attacks have the potential to disrupt the critical lifeline of clean and safe drinking water water, as well as impose significant costs on affected communities, the letter said. China's embassy in Washington and Iran's mission to the United Nations did not immediately return a message seeking comment. Both countries have previously denied carrying out cyber attacks. The digital safety of water and sewage plants has long been a concern for cybersecurity professionals because the facilities provide a critical service yet have minimal security. Last year's intrusion at a booster facility which monitors and regulates water pressure in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, drew particular attention in part because the stricken controller was replaced with a message saying, you have been hacked. No damage to that water system was reported, but in a statement released at the time, an industry group called the Water Information Sharing and Analysis Center said, this may not be an isolated incident. Wednesday's letter called on governors to, quote, ensure that all water systems in your state comprehensively assess their current cybersecurity practices and to prepare for future potential cyber incidents. The Knight County Sheriff's Office, along with a SWAT team, respond to a home on Iron Street Thursday afternoon looking for a man on the run who has a warrant for previously fleeing officers. We spoke with Sheriff Joe McGill for the details. Hi, I'm Sheriff McGill. Uh, today is Thursday. Uh, we are currently down the street from 1611 Irons with some SWAT activity. Uh, at about 1.20 this afternoon, a call came into the NCSO dispatch in reference to a subject who we know is having a warrant for a charge of fleeing from deputies a few days ago. Uh, the information was that this individual was at this premises and deputies responded. When deputies arrived, they attempted to make contact at the residence calling the name of the individual and they could hear movement inside of the residence but there was no answer at the door. Uh, deputies set up a perimeter around the residence and eventually three individuals came out of the, the residence at different times. Um, we do believe that the individual we're looking for with the warrant is still inside the residence and refuses to respond in any way. We contacted our SWAT unit who uh, have recently arrived and we will be attempting to make contact with that subject and get him to come out of the, the house without any further activity. But if necessary, we will go in and we will uh, search the premises for him. Uh, that's all we have at this point and any further information will be released uh, by our uh, social media. Thank you. Knight County Sheriff deputies eventually took two men into custody who were hiding underneath the home. The two men have been identified as Blake Jones and Jeffrey Lafray. Blake Jones and the previous Blake Jones had their previous warrant for fleeing arrest. 
As campaign season heats up, one U.S. senatorial candidate is all about making Nevada great again as she tirelessly campaigns across the Silver State and meets with her potential constituents. Let's see what she had to say this Friday night. I always encourage people to vet their candidates. Right, because exactly. Because, like in my race, there are a, 10 of us or more, you know, just on the Republican ticket. And there is a vast difference between all of us. We may agree on a lot of policy because we are Republicans. However, between us, there's a big difference. And a lot of people like to lump us in, but I'm the only one with a 30-year career in Nevada. I have contributed to the growth of this city. I've contributed to the community, not only volunteering, but through my business. Um, I have raised my kids here. They were born and raised here. And my home is here. And I have a lot vested. I have the most vested out of everybody in this race. Just because I have been here for so long, we have multiple carpetbaggers in this race. And people say, oh, you know, Steph, don't be negative and don't talk about the others. But I believe that voters need to know the truth. They have, because a lot of people won't do the research. They won't take the time. There's multiple carpetbaggers. There are opportunists. There are perennial candidates. There are the ones that go along to get along. We need a true Nevadan, someone who really has some skin in the game, one of our own, and we need someone who's going to be a fighter. Not only a diplomat, but also who's going to do the hard work, stand up, say the hard things, though, you know, sometimes the truth hurts, and someone who's not going to be afraid to stand up to the establishment and the corruption that we see in D.C. because these people, a lot of them don't have courage. And I'm the type of person where I'm going to fight for justice. I'm going to fight for America and for Nevadans. And I'm not afraid. I have absolutely zero fear at all running this campaign, sitting in that seat and doing that job. I have full confidence that I will do that job. I will do it well. And I am unafraid. And I have the courage to stand up. And I will fight. If any Clark County or Nye County incumbent or candidate would like us to cover their campaign, kindly email us at news at kpvm.com. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. And welcome back. A Las Vegas woman convicted of COVID-19 fraud was sentenced to 30 years in prison today. Samantha Roberts now brings us this story. A Las Vegas woman will be serving time behind bars after she received over half a million dollars in fraudulently obtained COVID-19 loans, according to federal prosecutors. Karen Ray Choppin was sentenced Wednesday to 30 years in prison, five additional years of supervised release, and she's also been ordered to pay back more than $589,000 in restitution. This all according to the U.S. Attorney's Office for Nevada. Prosecutors said Choppin, also known as Karen Hanafius, filed several false statements about her company's business operations and payroll expenses for six fraudulent Paycheck Protection Program, or PP. PP loans. Choppin had applied for $1 million in loans and was able to receive four loans for approximately $596,931. She used that money to benefit herself, including buying a Mercedes-Benz SUV, according to prosecutors. She pled guilty last year to a count of bank fraud and was previously incarcerated in 2016 for insurance fraud, mortgage fraud, and theft when she was the owner of Tahoe Weddings and Events in Zephyr Cove, Nevada. The U.S. Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee held a hearing on the fentanyl crisis affecting our state, where overdoses recently increased by a monumental 97 percent. R.J. Camacho now brings us the story. Senator Jackie Rosen spoke at a recent hearing for the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee discussing the impact that the fentanyl crisis has had on Nevada. The fentanyl crisis, like you all say, we all know this. It's devastating. It's devastating in my home state of Nevada, communities all across Nevada. The Southern Nevada Health District reported in February of this year that between 2020 and 2023, the number of fentanyl overdoses among residents of Clark County, our largest county in Nevada, 
uh, is increased by 97%. 97%. It's one of the reasons why earlier this year I returned to the southern border to meet with Border Patrol and CBP to find out really what those law enforcement officers need to help stop the flow of fentanyl into the U.S. And since returning, I'm really proud to have passed bipartisan legislation to address the fentanyl crisis voting for increased investments in technologies that help and intercept drugs. But as to what you've alluded to, much more work needs to be done. Our viewers may have noticed that we are no longer running the NCSO arrest stories, and there is a reason for that. News 25 caught up with Sheriff Joe McGill to tell us all about it. Over the last several weeks, uh, we have been consulting with the Nye County District Attorney's Office, uh, with our own staff, and reviewing the uh, Nevada statutes in reference to public records release. Uh, the advice given by the dis district attorney's office was that we were releasing records uh, that should not be released according to the way the statute is read. Um, so at this point in time, we are heeding the advice of the district attorney's office and basically we're not releasing any public records, any records that uh, have been requested through a public records request document. And if there's any question on that, we consult with, it, with the district attorney's office on a case by case basis. Um, I don't know if any of that will change in the future, but as you have seen, uh, we're no longer releasing our declarations of arrest and we're being a lot more uh, cautious with what information we do give or don't give. Uh, the concern about releasing some of these records is that the public release of the records could jeopardize in one way or another the prosecution or investigation of a criminal case. And that's the reason why the uh, exemption is in the state statutes. And that's the reason why the change of policy has taken place recently. If anything changes in the future, we'll see how it goes. News 25 has reached out to Brian Kunze's office for comment, and Brian nor his staff have gotten back to us as of this newscast. News 25 will keep you updated as this story develops further. The upcoming Baker to Vegas race is expected to impact area highways this weekend. Mikey Ruhan has all the details. The Los Angeles Police Revolver and the Athletic Club will hold its annual Challenge Cup, Baker to Vegas Relay, from 8 a.m. March 23rd until 9 a.m. March 24th. The foot race consists of 10,000 runners, guests, family members, and support staff split among hundreds of law enforcement teams. The race starts along Highway 127, 25 miles north of Baker, California, and continues north to Shoshone before proceeding east on State Highway 178 to the Nevada State Line. The race continues in Nevada along State Route 372 to State Route 160 and travels along State Route 160 from Pahrump into Las Vegas. The race turns on East State Route 160 north onto Fort Apache Road to Desert Inn Road before heading to the finish line at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino Pavilion at 3700 West Flamingo Road in Las Vegas. Motorists should anticipate lane restrictions and possible travel delays along the race route. Drivers are urged to use caution while traveling alongside the special event to heed special event signage and seek alternate detour routes when possible. For additional information on the Challenge Cup, including route maps, visit bakervegas.net. We have more news on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. Deanna Lewis from Pets Are Worth Saving tells us about a cute and energetic dog named Clary looking for a forever home. Here we have Clary. She is a 10-month-old shepherd mix. Clary is up to date on all of her shots. She has her rabies also. She is microchipped. She is spayed. She is 10 months old. 
She came to us as a litter. She's the last one of her litter. Clary is $200 to adopt. Clary's very shy when you first meet her. Once she gets to know you, she opens up. She's very loving. She wants just tons and tons of attention. Um, she's great with kids. She's great with other dogs. She's okay with cats, but she's still very young. So if you would like to set up a meet with Clary, you can call us at 775-253-5051 or visit us at our thrift store at 520 East Street, Suite C. You can also visit us at our website of nevadapaws.com or on our Facebook page, Nevada Paws Group. The PBS hit series Antiques Roadshow is making a stop in Las Vegas later this spring. Let's check it out and find out all the details. The PBS series Antiques Roadshow is coming to Las Vegas later this spring. The show will host an all-day appraisal event on Wednesday, May 1st at the Springs Preserve, part of a five-city trip across the country. Guests will get free evaluations of their antiques and collectibles. Each ticketed guest can bring two items for appraisal. Admission is free, but tickets are required, and you must enter a sweepstakes to win a pair of tickets. Visit pbs.org slash roadshow tickets to enter. A library of the future is coming to the historic Westside community. The Las Vegas Clark County Library District broke ground on the new West Las Vegas Library. It is set to open fall of 2025. The long-awaited groundbreaking coincides with a historic milestone for the library district. KCLV Channel 2 produced this story. It's a long-awaited groundbreaking for a library built for the future. It all coincides with a golden milestone. This is 50 years, all I can tell you, this has been a dream come true. It's the 50th anniversary of the first library in the historic Westside community. It sat at Jackson and D Street. This milestone achievement was thanks to the efforts of community activists, Miss Ruby, Duncan. <laughs> Ms. Ruby could not be here with us today, but she is aware that her early work in promoting literacy for our children is once again bearing fruit. The library will move about a mile from its current location off Lake Mead to a plot of land near North Martin Luther King Boulevard and Lake Mead. The city of Las Vegas gave the library district the land after purchasing the existing library building. This will be the library of the present and the future. The West Las Vegas Library will double in size. This technology hub will feature state-of-the-art multimedia labs with audio video production, even DJ equipment, as well as computer labs for adults and children. A business and technology center will focus on employment training, all things digital, and resources to land jobs. There will also be an adult education and learning center. Kelvin said that I can work in this library now, but I said I got a job. But I mean, when I was in high school, I worked in a library. And I do believe that that was a place that helped to, to cultivate my excitement and interest in pursuit of knowledge. Library goers will enjoy an event center, an area just for teens, a large outdoor area for events, spacious reading areas, and of course, no shortage of books. I welcome you to come and read with me. Mark your calendars. The new West Las Vegas Library is set to open fall of 2025. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Now taking a look through our Learner and Rowe Weather Cam, it's a beautiful day in the paradise of Pahrump. Rory now has the weather report for our weekend. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real.
Good evening, Nevada. I am Roy Rossell here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv and now Roku. Taking a look at Nevada right now, up in northern Nevada, Fernley is at 67 degrees, Fallon is at 70, Carson City and Tonopah are both at 63 degrees, Goldfield is at 64, Beatty is at 71, Amargos at 77, Las Vegas at 74, and Death Valley at 88 degrees. But here in the Paradise of Pahrump, it is currently 71 degrees. The high today, just a little while ago, was 74 degrees. It was partly cloudy today. The wind blew south at 14 miles per hour and the humidity was 18%. But the sun rose this morning at 643 and set at 658 p.m. The humidity does go up to 32% today, but the low tonight is going to be a little chilly at 53 degrees. It will also be partly cloudy tonight as well. But taking a look at the seven day forecast, it looks like there's going to be a lot of mid and low 60s throughout next week, but there is one good weather day that is going to be Wednesday that is going to be 71 degrees. It looks like it's going to be partly cloudy and there's going to be a lot of wind, but that is no reason to be any worried this week because we are going to enjoy the nice cold week that is coming to us next week. Now back to the desk, here's David and Maria. Thank you, Rory. Well, that wraps up this edition of News 25. I'm David Preston. And I'm Maria Centers, and we can't wait to bring you your news Monday night. Have a great weekend.